and welcome to Mr. C History. Now I am in Stamford Bridge, not the one we might think of in London, but actually the one outside York, in the Vale of York, because I'm here to talk about that other great battle of 1066, the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Now, of course, all the attention goes on the Battle of Hastings, and I'm sure we'll talk about that at some other point, but I want to focus on the other battle that happened just a few days before that, at here at Stamford Bridge in Yorkshire. Before we start all that, let's talk about the context. The first week of January 1066, the King of England, Edward the Confessor, dies. Now he dies with no children. Uh, he also was, he's often conceived as seen as a bit of a puppet king. He is sort of the figurehead and underneath him are all the different earls ruling their uh, own area. One of whom was a man called Harold Godwinson, Earl of Wessex. And that's an area that stretched from Cornwall all the way to Kent. Essentially he governed that land. And there were earls of Northumberland or Northumbria and we talk about those earls of Mercia in the middle and they sort of run their own domains really warlords almost Edward the Confessor sort of held it all together anyway he dies as I say childless and now three people claim the throne actually maybe even a few more but three main main contenders one was William Duke of Normandy I'm going to park that there he's a very significant person he will become William Duke of Normandy uh, William the Conqueror the other one is the man I mentioned, Harold Godwins, and he is the most powerful person in the kingdom, so he assumes that role of the King of England. Many, many people are unhappy about this, including Harold Hardrada. Now, Harold Hardrada's claim to the throne stems back to King Canute and the Danelaw. He was the, the Viking leader, and England had been ruled by the Scandinavians, the Vikings, the Danes for a long, long, long time. And then they sail up what is now the great uh, the river Ouse, which is on, uh, York is on, but they arrive here at Rickall. The river Ouse is just along that uh, tree line there behind me. And it's a nice bend in the river here, and it's a flat plain at Rickall. It would have been an amazing sight to the, bit, the people in the little village just uh, behind here at Rickhall. These quite big ships, 300 of them, carrying horses and these huge Norsemen would have come on. Uh, it would have been a, a, quite a sight to see. One other person to talk about is Tostig. Tostig was Harold Godwinson's brother. Now, he had been the Earl of Northumbria under Edward the Confessor, but he wasn't a very good leader, very heavy-handed, lots of taxations, rebellions in the north. So Harold Godwinson had managed to convince Edward the Confessor to sort of push him out, kick him out, make him stop being the Earl of Northumbria. So Tostig was very angry, and particularly angry, with his brother, Harold Godwinson. <laughs> After landing at Rickle, Hardrada and Tostig came here to Fulford. This is Fulford Cross. Fulford is now a suburb of the city of York, but at the time it was fields and meadows around here. And it was here that they met the Earls of Mercia and Northumbria, Edwin and Morcar. And in the end, it was a massive victory for the Norwegians, for the Scandinavians. They completely obliterated the English forces. Harold Godwinson down in the south would have thought, oh gosh, I've got to go sort this out. One interesting thing that comes about though with Fulford is that Hardrada makes a bit of a mistake. The English essentially surrender and they say, oh, fine, we'll give you some hostages. And Hardrada says, okay, that's fine, but I want more. So the English say, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you some more hostages. You've got to go find them. Why don't you head to a place called Stamford Bridge over, you know, just on the other side of York. We'll meet you there in a couple of days with some more hostages. And Hardrada says, yes, okay, that's fine. The reason why this is a mistake is then when Harold Godwinson comes up and says to the surviving Englishman who lost the Battle of Fulford, says, do you know where Hardrada is? They say, yeah, we know exactly where he is. And he's not expecting you, you well-trained soldiers. He's expecting some hostages. So why don't you go and surprise him? We don't know too much about the events of the Battle of Stamford Bridge because there's not many chronicles, but there is one very, very interesting and amazing story. There was one bridge there and apparently so the English had got there by surprise and they'd seen the Scandinavians almost like sunbathing or lounging around having their breakfast on the other side. And there was one massive seven foot tall Norse man standing on the bridge standing around with this huge axe blocking it all the way through. And he apparently he took out 50 English um, soldiers just swinging his axe, b barricading the bridge. The only way they managed to uh, finally finish him off is they had to get one of the English soldiers got onto the river on a raft, sailed down the river with a long pike, and then poked up 
on the bridge straight into the Norse man's groin. Perhaps the only positive story for the Vikings and the Norwegians. But that very brave Norse man was all in vain. Essentially, the, the Scandinavian, the Norwegians, get pushed and pushed out to the fields that we see over here. They don't know the exact site of where the whole main pitch battle took place, but it's somewhere in the fields along there. And they are totally routed, the Norwegians. They, they're brutally um, massacred. There's several reasons why. Obviously, the element of surprise, which I have been talking about, is hugely part of it. They were still having their breakfast. Some of them were not dressed. Indeed, they had left their armour further away near the bridge and by their boats. So they, many of them were completely unarmed, you know, prone. Some of them didn't even have weapons as well. So that's an obvious reason. The great training and leadership of Harold Godwinson, the how he got up here so fast, and they were pumped, ready to go, his house cars properly well uh, trained and good, good equipment. It was a clear, clear victory for Saxon England. So, a fantastic victory for Harold Godwinson. Hurrah! But unfortunately, it is very short-lived. Just three days after the Battle of Stamford Bridge, Harold gets news that the South has been invaded. William, Duke of Normandy, has invaded the South of Solent, where he had been all of the... Harold Godwinson had been there all summer, waiting for William, expecting that invasion, had had to schlep it all the way 185 miles up here to, to York. Suddenly he gets news of another invasion. What does he do? He has to get down there fast. But I can imagine him and his house carls, his very well-trained soldiers, are probably thinking, oh, I'm knackered after that. You made me march all the way up here in the first place. I've had to now fight a battle against some crazy Norwegians. You want me to go down south again, another 200 miles march. How are we going to do this? So after all that, what's, what's the significance of Stamford Bridge? What's the point of anything else? Well, it's interesting. It's the last victory of Saxon England. It's the last hurrah of any Saxon king doing things. So that's the significance. Well, I think it's also very significant. It's the end of the Viking invasions of Britain. There's a few more skirmishes around Ireland and stuff. But for 304 or 400 years prior to all of this, Norwegians and Scandinavians had been invading Britain to a huge degree. This was the end of that. And it sort of gets brushed away because of Hastings after that, as the Normans come in and that huge element of history that starts there. But it's interesting how it's a changing within a few weeks, Britain changes from a Saxon Viking conflict to Norman with the Battle of Hastings. It's also significant because it, it tires out Harold Godwinson's troops and they're very, very far away. Is the, is the Battle of Stamford Bridge the reason why Harold Godwinson loses Battle of Hastings? Possibly and probably. After all that, Hardrad is dead, Tostig's dead. Hardrada's son, Olaf, he, do, he does survive. He goes back to Norway uh, with just 24 ships, never to invade England again. Anyway, so that was the Battle of Stamford Bridge. I hope you've enjoyed that. As ever, please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.